Hello, everybody. Can I ask you to get back in your cars so we can start the event soon? Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. We're going to start in two minutes, so please get back to your cars.
right, guys, ceremony is about to start. If we could ask you to wait in your car until, did it pick up anyone? <laughs> until you're dismissed, we'd appreciate it. Well, Welcome families, friends, students, and everyone watching from home to the 2020 Catlin Gable graduation. My name is Rick Ricasso White, and I am your NC today. We're gonna kick off this truly unique event with some words by our wonderful president. Give a healthy round of hazard lights and honks to Indra Nalakrishnan. Welcome everyone to the first ever Catlin Gable Car Parade graduation. Who knew? A huge thank you to everyone behind the scenes that pivoted to create and orchestrate a new event. We would hug you if we could. Thank you to the fabulous teachers and administrators that have supported and nurtured our children in their intellectual and social emotional growth. I want to thank the wonderful parent and guardian community of this class that I am so fortunate to be a part of. It definitely took this village. To Brian and his dear family, our hearts and thoughts are with you. May you continue to make great strides. The biggest thank you of all goes to the seniors of the class of 2020. As much as the teachers and adults in your lives have taught you a lot, what you have taught us is far greater. You are leaders, advocates, activists, researchers, writers, artists, and so much more. Many of you have shown tremendous strength in finding your authentic voice. And then, with vulnerability, bravery, and courage, you shared that voice. That is a gift to all of us. You inspire us and call us to responsible action. Born into the aftermath of 9-11 and graduating high school during the COVID-19 pandemic and the largest global civil rights movement, you are built for fighting for social change and justice. Keep speaking up and taking action as you navigate your next steps. And please help shape the future. We need you. I am grateful for the privilege to know so many of you students. 
I know that you all have had different experiences at Catlin Gable, and I care about your stories. Though my term as board chair is just beginning as you graduate, please know that I will work tirelessly along with school leaders to ensure that your legacy lives on. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, everyone. And let's begin the celebration. Thank you, Indra. Now Sophie Feldman and Will Leonard will recite our school chapter. Hi everyone. Um, so even though you probably can't see us, uh, today Sophie and I will be reciting Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 13 of the King James edition. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Thank you. Thanks. I've always enjoyed that last sentence. It speaks so well to so many of our graduates. Thank you, Sophie and Will. We will now hear from the baby boomer with the best beard on the block, Tim B -b 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 Bazemore. Uh, thank you, Rick. Thank. Uh, and thank you, Will. And thank you, Sophie. And thank you, Indra, for leading us forward today and in years ahead. Greetings, families, colleagues, and of course, most of all, our wonderful class of 2020. This is an extraordinary conclusion to your Catlin Gable experience. Your teachers, your parents, and I are sorry about the somewhat shrunken ending to your expansive educational experience. But I want you to look on the bright side. You now know how to learn and work remotely, full time. And that'll be a helpful skill in the future. And despite this spring, I did the math, 92% of your high school days have been full of laughter, friendship, classroom debates, benches in the sun, afternoon practices on campus together. Graduation ceremonies are always full of mixed emotions and even more so this year. The danger of the pandemic, the turmoil of social injustice is changing how we behave, what we believe, and who we and you will be. Fortunately, you're now among the best educated students in the world. You are the dynamic, 
talented, intriguing class of 2020. 79 accomplished, proud, playful, questioning, promising young adults. And whether you've been here for two years or 14, you've each grown into who you are as individuals, distinct from each other, unique. You are not all the same, and you weren't meant to be. You have become your unique moral, intellectual, physical, and social, social self in the company of your classmates. Through class trips, group presentations, close games, and long rehearsals, your classmates, like your family, have influenced you in seen and unseen ways. It may be hard to discern fully now, but how they've shaped you will become clearer over time. Last October at our all-school assembly here in the circle, I asked you to think of a teacher who believes in you, encourages you, and inspires you. And I asked you to honor that teacher and pursue inspired learning and responsible action. And you have. Your teachers and I are awestruck at your ability to read, think, question, solve, and most of all, to learn. You understand the relationship between ideas, knowledge, and experience. You've shown that you can do school well. And yet, as students in a small private school in Portland, Oregon, we all know that's simply not enough. Out there, beyond Catlin Gable School, is a world facing challenges of inequity, intolerance, economic uncertainty, political combat, environmental crisis. It's also a world of great beauty, noble ideals, endless opportunities and hope. Are you ready to navigate that immutable tension? Can your Catlin Gable experience inspire you to act responsibly and contribute to positive change in our heartbreaking and sublime in a respect and challenge? Some of you in the class of 2020 have turned that mission charge back on us. And you're asking us, how is Catlin Gable School taking responsible action in the world? And that's a fair question. As I tell alumni every year, we answer that question primarily through who you become and what you do in the world. And I know that's not enough. We also need to answer that question by seeking to model what is possible in an imperfect world. We need to try to be diverse and also inclusive. We need to be a place where everyone appreciates the talents and interests of others, where we value achievement and collaboration, where we demonstrate care for our planet through our behaviors, and where all voices are heard and included. We don't always model that well, and I appreciate you calling on us to be better for you and for future students. We have work to do to realize our mission and our obligation to all of you. Meanwhile, it's time for you to leave and see what you can do with everything you've learned here. Some folks like to say Catlin Gable School is a bubble, and in some ways that's true. And we want you to feel that way, especially today, because it means you're ready to pop that bubble, step out, and see what you can do in the world. The conviction that you have today that you've outgrown this school is part of the plan. So get to it. We'll be watching. Find a cause you'll take up, a principle you'll fight for, a human need you'll seek to resolve. Find your inspiration and take that action. You can make not only a life for yourself, you can make the world anew. Good luck in all that lies ahead of you. And thank you for everything you've done for our school community. Thank you, Tim, for those memorable and inspiring words. OK, friends, are you ready for this? I've taught her several times. She is one of the smartest and most humble people I've ever encountered. She's probably blushing as I say this under her mask. Your student speaker, Anusha Greiveldinger. The 
last time I was here, it was snowing. On Friday, March 13th, a large group of us were gathered in the library to take a class photo in case it was the end of our time on campus. Even though this isn't how I envisioned our graduation, I'm really grateful to be back here with all of you for one last time. Our hearts go out to Brian and wish him a safe and speedy recovery. Even though I've only been at Catlin for four years, Brian and everyone else in our class have helped me grow into a better person. It is an honor to be graduating alongside this group of creative, intelligent, funny, caring, and driven students. There's no one else I would have rather shared these last four years of experiences with. Some of the best include the triumphs of our sports teams over the years, especially the soccer sweep this year. Bob teaching us how to square dance on the middle school field at the beginning of the freshman class trip. Foosball, spike ball, and hacky sack outside Dan. Getting candy from Casey. Our chaotic college decision day Zoom call, gotcha disputes, struggles for time in the hammock, countless communicator bake sales and shop, groups of a few more than five at library tables, and of course, hens yaki. Although the end of our senior year was not what we originally envisioned, we made the most of it. 2020 has not been an easy year by any means. It has pushed us to see how we will adapt and respond to the obstacles facing us. We are a group of people who will rise to the occasion and meet challenges head on, working to make the world a better place. This has been highlighted in the last few months, but has also been evident as long as I've been here. In response to COVID-19, each of us sacrificed the traditions of second semester senior year in order to keep those around us safe. We donned masks and self-quarantine to help reduce the impact of the virus. We have volunteered at a variety of organizations that tackle important issues facing people across the country. Some include Blanche House, the Food Bank, Meals on Wheels, and Socks and Sandwiches to Combat Hunger. Work at the Center and Youth Educating Police to increase the impact of youth voices. Those are just a small number of the organizations that members of our class have worked with to help improve Portland. To advocate for national and global change, people in our class participated in the March for Our Lives, the Women's March, climate, and climate change protests, among others. In response to the deaths of many black Americans at the hands of police, most recently Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, we individually stepped up our efforts to, port, to support the Black Lives Matter movement and to actively combat racism. Although many of us will never understand the struggles of being black in America, we stand as allies, contributing by signing petitions, having tough conversations, educating ourselves, and protesting. At the beginning of the school year, I remember the administration asking how we wanted to be remembered. Even though we were unable to give a class gift due to the abrupt end of our senior year, we made a permanent mark both on and off campus with our actions. The advocacy of the environmental action team has helped Catlin reduce its carbon footprint. A holiday assembly just won't be the same without seeing Justin, Graham, Helena, Will, Duncan, Keen, Eamon, and Tristan performing. I've seen people grow as athletes on sports teams, as lawyers in the mock trial courtrooms, as performers on stage, and as innovators in the robotics lab. By being leaders in the Catlin community, we have greatly impacted those around us by helping direct the future of the school. I know each and every one of us will continue to positively influence our communities, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we all achieve. Thank you to the parents, guardians, family members, faculty, and staff that have helped us get to this point. Congratulations to the Catlin Gable class of 2020. We made it. Wow, that was really excellent, Anusha. Thank you. Up next, 
She works harder and cares more than anyone I know. She is by far the best principal I've ever worked with, and believe it or not, I actually went back and rewatched both of her previous graduation speeches because they were that good. Now on the mic, Aline Garcia Rubio. Congratulations to all who are gathered and present in person and elsewhere to celebrate this caring and capable group of young people. I know and they know that you have supported them through the routine and the exceptional moments through the last 17 or 18 years. Seniors, graduations are always remarkable accomplishments. This one is all the more so. You have arrived at this moment after and through a spring of many losses. No zoo visits with first graders, no prom, no takeaway day, no senior trip or yearbook signing. After four years of consistent effort, after the previous eight of growth and play from childhood to adulthood, you have arrived. The world asked you to let go of athletic practices and competitions of your peers' company and your joyful parties, but to keep on working still, and you did. We know you let go of all for the sake of other people's health. Maybe your grandparents, maybe your neighbors. Certainly, you stayed home to protect many people you don't know. And you kept on learning. Well done. You finished with grace and tenacity. I bow to you with much respect and admiration and with much affection too. We gathered a few days ago for the senior project presentations and I found myself then as I did at the recognition assembly and our final gathering yesterday, a little choked up, tearful. I scrolled through the screen and saw each of your teachers smiling at you, proud. I saw your family witnessing your efforts, also smiling, enjoying you and your success. And I was a little tearful. In true Catlin Gable practice, I reflected on that emotion. Was that sadness for our inability to be closer? Am I disappointed that we're in the rain outside in our cars rather than the theater elbow to elbow? Am I angry about the injustices we have been witnessing and concerned for how we perpetuate them? Yes, all of that. Yes, like you, I am disappointed, sad, angered. But really, I was choked up because I am moved by you and by your teachers. I would like to pause and acknowledge your teachers. In fact, I'd like to ask that everybody honk a horn for your teachers who are here standing in the rain. They love you and they work so hard for you. I was saying that I was choked up because I was moved. I was moved mostly by you. Your strength impresses me. Your individual and collective spirit has withstood past screens and isolation. We heard your cheers at yesterday's Zoom, read the chat showing and telling about your friendships on Thursday. You had the strength to work in farms, walk dozens of miles, you hurled jobs coding and learning administrative tasks, you learned how to cook, you made face shields, melodies, robots, and masks. You held internships, learned new instruments, you wrote reflections on your high school career, you learned how to rap, worked with government offices for a safer city, you produced music, you made bread. Your endurance allowed us to finish your academic work and then to find new interests, pursue them steadily, and to learn. And you stay connected. You showed up for yourself and you showed up for each other, fully, with your educated minds and cultivated hearts. You sent notes and videos to Brian, you gave each other shelter and hope, even from afar. One of you drew portraits of your friends. One of you wrote notes to classmates. Many of you wrote open letters to the school, thoughtful letters asking for better, reflecting on how you have persisted and succeeded. Maya Angela once said that her mission in life was not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. If we were to hold her standards as our own, and I suggest that each of us could, I would say you did it. The class of 2020 thrived despite obstacles, uncertainties, and harsh realities. You worked with passion, compassion, some humor. And yes, I'd also say you did it with style. Look at all those cars. 
gracefully and kindly. What did you learn this spring beyond sewing and weeding, Swahili, biking, cooking, yoga, and quantitative methods of biology? Beyond map making and changing tires, what did you learn about yourself? You, each of you. You made so much possible mostly on your own that took curiosity, discipline, commitment. I believe that many, if not all of you, were created rather than creators in this spring's endeavors. I once read that the work we do brings us into existence far more than the other way around. Do you see how you were shaped as you worked? Do you see your capacity? You chose, you acted, you grew yourself. That is perhaps the most apt transition into the adulthood path that is in front of you. You chose. The choices will continue in big and small ways. You will choose how you want to act. You will choose who you want to be with. You will choose to engage with what is in front of you or not to do so. Sometimes it will be simple. Do I make breakfast? Do I call dad? Do I have that drink? Sometimes it will be much more complex. How do I love this person? Do I forgive? Do I want to be a surgeon? Would I like to move abroad? Choose deliberately. Each action and each step will make you. Choose what you do and choose how you do it. At last year's graduation, I urged the graduates to allow for uncertainty and alternative possibilities. I said to them, when you believe something bad or unlucky has happened, widen your lens. Consider an alternative story. See what is in front of you. I based that recommendation on a story in which a character encounter, encounters all sorts of ill fates, lost farm animals, a broken leg, that type of thing, only to find that a new path is revealed, a fortunate situation arose, the lost farm host returns with a herd, a broken leg prevents a draft to war. And so a child concludes that maybe good luck and bad luck really are all mixed up. You never know what will happen next. Of course, I knew nothing about COVID and the uncertainties of 2020 when I said that. I do know now that we see these events as unfortunate. Of course, death, isolation, and economic downturns are terrible. But maybe, just maybe, in all these eels, some new possibilities have and will continue to open. Maybe we needed to be home and paying attention to react to the death of George Floyd. Maybe we needed to consume a little less to realize we can change our habits for the sake of those who live closer to the equator and for the earth. Maybe we needed a pandemic to mobilize for equitable healthcare in the United States. Maybe, just maybe, the narrative is a little different or richer than we see it. What alternative storyline is there beyond the one that you see and tell? I invite you to allow a rewrite of this and any story. I invite you to practice telling yourself alternative narratives. How is this event for the family in the car next to you? How do they feel in our school? What do they read in the news? What do they feel and think that you might not? What is the alternative story? How is this rain fun, funny, refreshing? And what about your internal narrative? There may be a story of your, fortunate, of your fortune amongst your losses. I see your power. I see your capacity, tenacity, mastery. In the months of May and the few days in June, beyond what you felt and the story you told yourself, we saw you do your best with what was available. You moved and inspired us with art, with words, with action. Phoebe's painting, Alyssa's Catlin Speak article, Sarah's teaching. Seniors, each of you has immense power, and you're a bright flame in this messy world. Stoke that fire in you, and please allow the people around you to see it, to see you. Today, we see your intelligence, your potential, your joy, and your courage. And please continue to make a life of love and connection. Don't waste a minute. The people you love are right next to you. I challenge you to expand that circle that you love, not just to those that you find endearing, entertaining, magnetic, or inviting, not just to those who are like you. Consider loving those whom you have ignored. If love is a stretch, consider care. Who else could you care for? What else could you care about? You will decide and act. Choose. Choose. Lastly, 
before we move to handing you your well-earned diplomas, I'd ask us all to reflect on what we can learn from Brian and his family. They're watching us, by the way, from the hospital. And Tim Enrique and I will go over there to hand him his diploma. If he were here, able to join us, as we hope he will in a future alumni event, what might he have to teach us about hardship, about endurance, about love? Let's ask and answer that for ourselves now, and we'll ask Brian about it later. Congratulations. You did it. And you did it well. We see you. We are proud of you. And we are eager to see what you do next. I hope that each of you is proud for yourself. Congratulations, class of 2020. What did I tell you? I knew that was going to be good. Thank you so much, Aline. Truthfully, I think that was something we all needed to hear, and I hope and I encourage you to go watch that speech again. All right, everyone, start your engines. Get them going. It's time for the graduates to receive their diplomas. Ibrahim Saeed Ahmed. Alexander Philip Aitchison.
Lucas Jesse Aitchison. Daphne Alpe. Will Attig. Simon Marler Boyd. Lauren May Tan Kalora. Amy Chen. Caroline Rose Cook.
Audrey Madeline Daniels. Dawit Nathaniel Dean. Sophie Elizabeth Feldman. Lillian Grace Fenner. Joshua Danner Foster. Phoebe Isabel Frank. Jasper Leonard Gleason. Anusha Marguerite Greiveldinger. Abigail Quinn Halperin.
Madeline Rose Herbst. Tanner Kavena Okalani Hillison. Annika Holiday. Maya Maria Corio Holman. Nina Brooke Hunter. Arjun Jen. Margaret Alden Johnson. Evan Alexander Carp. Catherine 
Elizabeth Keen. Helena Camille Curry. Adve Karane. Gordon Kai Tren Lam. Lee Kamau Lambert. James Alden Lane. Robin Latondris. William Conrad Leonard.
Jane Florence Madden. Britton Alford Massback. James Hartness Maslin. Truman Raleigh McNeil. Greta Josephine Miller. Stella Rose Randall Meyer. Anne Louise Nato.
Ramiya Gopal Nella Krishnan. Eleanor Haskell Nicholson. Graham Patrick O'Neill. Luca Ansel Perzik. Tristan Chang Pang. Arushi Vinayak Falke. Asim Sunni Ali Phillips. Thank you, Arushi. Ezra Ansel Paleski.
Avery Colin Pritchard. Evan Kai Rail. Ezra Karen Berkowitz Rich. Zachary Kislak Robinson. Elizabeth Catherine Rufi. Brian Anthony Richardson. Tim and Aleem are going to personally deliver Brian's diploma, but Brian and his family would like everyone to thank would like to thank everyone for their love and support. Finn Kolak Russell. Kenya Eve Say.
Jet Zion Shang. <laughs> Casey James Schultes. Ryan Scott Schultes. Dylan Matthew Smith. Chloe Eileen Snyder. Duncan Smith Swafer. Elise Song.
William Alexander Swan. Mayumi Grace Sugio. Justin Timothy Vamo. Lucinda Renee Walrod. Eamon Reed Walsh. Monica Tumalu Ochichi. Kaylin Lane Zubida Walton McCauley. Corinne Delia Zuiba Walton McCauley. Amy S. Wong.
William Joseph Wong. Alexander Tucker Ward. Alyssa May Yue Zhang. We have a few minutes now before Alyssa's family makes their way back to the lot. I just wanted to take a second to point out how awesome this event is. I'm sure a lot of you woke up this morning with not only excitement, but some amount of disappointment for the things that you've missed out on. Both feelings are, of course, perfectly valid and expected. But I just wanted to make one point. Memory is a weird thing. I'm closing in on 20 years of teaching and it's just as many graduations. And honestly, I barely remember any of them. At best, a handful of memories stand out, and mostly it's because someone messed up. But this event, this graduation, nobody here will ever forget. In fact, if I were to give one piece of advice as we wait for everyone to come back to the lot, as you move through life, making decisions, make ones like big ones like career choices and little ones like trying a new restaurant. Focus a lot of your energy on making as many unique moments as possible. Many of those are the ones you'll remember. Of course, some of these memories will be, most of these memories will be like starting a new job, wedding days, your child's birth, graduations like this one. But other than these, the moments are up to you. You've got to make them. As you grow up, you'll be surprised with how many things you forget. Days will roll by, years will blend together, Netflix will ask you if you're still watching hundreds and hundreds of more times. My advice for you is to force unique memories, just like these ones, just like you've done today. You don't have to move to Southeast Asia like I am next month, but do your own thing in your own way, please. And just remember, hindsight is the class of 2020. I hope that you all have a great day. Please go back to the lot. We're going to do one more fun event and get next to your car. We're going to fly the drone overhead and take one last class picture. So make your way back to your car, please. Thank you. So I'll